But uh, how many of you have ever received an invitation? An invitation to a party, an invitation to a wedding. Most of us have received invitations, whether it be a birthday party or a wedding or uh, something of that fashion, or maybe a graduation. Those are special occasions. Uh, maybe you've received an invitation to uh, appear at the courthouse. Hopefully that was just jury duty. Uh, but nonetheless, we receive invitations, and all invitations have basic parts to them. Uh, invitations present, for instance, a predicament. The predicament is there are some people in one location that need to be in another location. And so that invitation is extended so that you can get people from one location to another location at a particular time and in that particular location uh, at the right time. And so there's a predicament that you have. It also offers uh, a possibility. Uh, there's a possibility of something grand or great that's going on, something that may bless you, or at least something that is going to uh, keep you out of trouble, like a summons to appear in court. Uh, so uh, it has a possibility that, is, that goes along with it. There's also a path. Every invitation I've ever received had uh, uh, an address on there, an address of a place that I needed to go a place that I needed to be at a particular point in time. And so it points me in the right direction. I know where I need to be, I know where I need to go, and I know when I need to be there. And there's also a possibility because that possibility, or a profit, because that profit is something is going to happen when I get there. It may simply be that I'm going to be able to share in a special moment with a loved one or someone that I have come to know. Uh, it may be that I'm going to win something when, when I get there. Maybe you've been to parties, they give out door prizes and things of that nature. So you get to go home with something once you've been there. But uh, whatever it might be, there is a profit that is involved. Long ago, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Jesus extends an invitation. Now, in that invitation, there's a predicament. He says that there are those who are weary and heavy laden. Paul describes it another way in Ephesians chapter 2. He identifies the fact that we're weary and heavy laden because of the fact that we are sinners. And we are dead in our trespasses and sins. We are in need of someone raising us out of our trespasses and sins. That's what wearies us. And Jesus invites us to come and find the remedy to our weariness. And so he says, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So he gives us a path, come unto me. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one uh, that, can, uh, that can get us to where we want to be. To his disciples he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If I want to have an eternal relationship with the Father, then that eternal relationship is only going to happen when I connect with Jesus Christ, when I begin a relationship with Jesus Christ. So my predicament is answered, my, my path is answered, and my prophet is answered because he says, I will find rest for my soul. That's what all of us need, and that's what all of us want. If we're weary and heavy laden, we need rest. Hardest working two men I've ever known is my father and my father-in-law. They could work anybody under the sink. I mean, they, they just uh, uh, hardworking men. I saw my father in his uh, younger days come in from working all day long just drenching with sweat. He'd walk to the refrigerator in our home and he'd pull out a gallon of tea that my mother had made earlier in the day. And he would stand there and drink the entire gallon of tea. That's how hot he was. That's how tired he was, and he needed that gallon of tea. Now, thankfully, my mom made two gallons of tea every day, and we had another one left over for supper. But he would drink that gallon of tea because he was tired. My father-in-law is another very hardworking individual. My father passed away a couple of years ago. My father-in-law is still living, and at 75 years old, I still can't keep up with him. I mean, he works, and he works, and he works. And I, we have worked days that I thought I could work no longer. I was, I was absolutely dragging because of all that we had done during that day. And the one thing I needed was rest. You know, it wasn't hard to fall asleep that night. It was real easy to fall asleep. Those who are weary need rest. Jesus says, if you come to me, I'll answer your predicament. I will give you a possibility. I will point the way. And I will make sure that you profit. 
no matter what comes, but you must come to me. Tonight we extend an invitation. With that invitation there is a predicament. There are some here that are away that need to come near to Jesus. With that invitation there is a possibility and that is you could find rest to your soul. And that path is only going to be found through Jesus Christ. But I promise you this. If you will obey the invitation, and, and a king's invitation is never to be answered, only obeyed. So if you'll obey that invitation, if you'll respond to Jesus and come to him tonight, I promise you, you'll find rest for your soul. Not just here, but you'll find rest for your soul on into eternity, which is why Jesus came and died on Calvary's cross. If you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, will you come to Jesus we come to Jesus by way of trusting Him and turning to Him in uh, the way of repentance and, and then submitting yourself upon confession of His name to be immersed into Him to rise and walk in newness of life. Will you do that tonight and give yourself completely over to Him that He can give you the rest that your soul needs? And you may already be a Christian, maybe you've already been baptized, but you've gone back out into the world, you've begun to live a life that looks a lot more like the life you lived before Jesus than the life you should be living after Jesus. And you've allowed sin to creep back into your, into your heart and into your home and into your soul. And you're wearied by it. Well, there is a way out. And John says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and will forgive us of all of our trespasses. And if you'll come to him tonight and confess that, he'll cleanse you again. And he will open up the door of rest to you once again. Will you obey him? Will you come tonight? Will you come now? While together we stand and sing.